Welcome to INFS 321 Information Sources. This is the second session on electronic resources. And we are going to look at the internet. I believe students, you are very familiar with the internet. So let's look at a few pointers on the internet. At the end of this session, I expect that you'll be able to understand the internet. So you'll be looking at the history of the internet, look at the date line, understand internet protocols, understand the type of browsers that we have with the internet. So your reading list is very important. There's a lot of information that you can get from this online tutorial. It's about finding information on the internet. And that is the website. Kindly visit the website for the information on the internet. So let's look at a few definitions and the history of the internet. The internet has been defined as a global network connecting millions of computers. It's also known as a network of net networks. No one is in charge of the internet. But we have organizations which have developed technical aspects of the network and they have set standards. That is why subsequently we'll be looking at protocols. Because no one is in charge, you need to use information from the, from the internet carefully. So a few deadlines. It began in September 1961 on the ARPA under the Advanced Research and um, Project Agency. Fast forward, it started with only one computer. Fast forward by 1970, we had 13 sites just connected. And then the rest is history. In 1973, Vincent Cerf and Robert Kahn established what we call the Transmission Control Protocol. In the 1970s, the university began, universities all over the world began using the internet protocol. And in 1978, the Transmission Control Protocol, which is used to be able to connect to computers, was re-engineered into two parts, Transmission Control Protocol and then Internet Protocol. Now, the history is quite long, so I'm going to encourage you to read all the history about the internet just for you to understand how it started. But importantly, let's look at some protocols, and I've mentioned some already, the transmission control protocol. Let's look at the protocol and how the protocol allows us to search and retrieve information. Now, a protocol is defined as a formal agreement. So when you talk of internet protocols, we are looking at formal agreements on form and style of communication with the internet or on the internet. And their uses are to ensure reliable information transfer, to ensure clear and unambiguous communication. So the TCP IP defines the rules and procedures for transmitting information transmitted in packages. When you send information on the internet, the information is sent through packages. And the TCP IP ensures that each packet is sent to the right address. So each packet contains addressing that identify which computer sent the package and which computer receives it. That is the role of the TCP, the Transmission Control Protocol. Without that, when you send a message, an email, it will end up in the, the box of somebody else. TCP IP, TCP ensures that when you send a message, it goes to the computer that it is intended for. <clears throat> the packets contain sequencing information that specifies order for reassembling when the packets arrive at the destination. When the message is too long to fit into one packet, the, the data is divided, but there is, that protocol ensures that even though it's divided, 
it goes to the particular computer that it is destined for. The IP governs the addressing. So every computer on the internet has a unique IP address. And of course, the IP consists of all the numbers separated by the periods. Another protocol which you need to know about is the file retriever protocol. That's the earliest way of retrieving information. So you view the names of the files stored on the seven computer with no graphics and sometimes no description of the file. And so you need advanced knowledge to be able to retrieve the files that you actually need. Then the file transfer protocol. This is one of the first internet services developed, which allows the users to move files from one computer to another. And most of the time, when you are downloading your music, you are sending one file from one server to your computer. So you are doing FTP. Then the communications protocol, which is very, very popular these days. And you have all the emails and the news group and the, the chats and the social media using this communication protocol. You either communicate in real time or uh, offline. So you know what the email is. And it's part of the communication protocol. Then listserv. What are listserv? This listserv are built on top of email protocols. And they work like electronic mails sending message to people whose names are on the list. And there are several listserv. You can subscribe to a listserv on information literacy. You can serve to a listserv on even football. And so what it does is that emails are sent to you because you have subscribed to that particular listserv. So it's a very good way of knowing what people think on a particular subject. So whatever your interest, you can subscribe to a listserv in that particular area. You would receive emails on what everybody has said concerning that particular topic or subject area that you have joined. Then a Usenet. Now, this is different from a listserv because the Usenet does not send you emails. You need to log into the particular bulletin or board to be able to get your information. Then Internet Relay Chat, IRC, and this happens to be with all the real-time chats that you have been doing. So all your chat services happens to fall on the communication protocol. Then of course, you have the Multimedia Information Protocol also under the communication protocol, what you have, the HTTP, popularly known as the web. It is so popular that people have even confused it with the internet. People think the internet is the web. No, the web is just a small service under the internet. And so you have um, the web language, the web language known as the HTT, HTML, to be able to communicate using the web. We also have what to enable you search the internet. So we call this the browsers, and the browsers enable you to navigate. So let's look at what a browser is, and let's look at some domain sites that you navigate to be able to find information on the internet. So the browser is an application to view files on the web, World Wide Web. So you know popular browsers such as Internet Explorer, such as Netscape, Firefox. And these are, are used to be able to launch the internet. Then to navigate the internet, you should be very familiar with what you call the Uniform Resource Locator. And these uh, happen to be the address of computer sites. So we have several of the URLs that you need to pay attention to. And they mean many things to us. For instance, in your URL, we have a particular name followed by a dot and followed by what you call a domain name. 
So you can have a site which is followed by a dot com or a site which is followed by edu, a site followed by gov. Now, for the purposes of searching, you need to be very careful about which domain sites you visit. If you have a, a site which is by extension a dot com, it's a commercial site and information provided by commercial um, interest can be very true or can be laced with um, what you call informations. That means they have a lot of advertising there. So any information that you take from a dot com can be very true, credible, or can be incredible. And so we tell information professionals that anything coming from a dot com should definitely be evaluated. Then we have another extension, a dot edu. Generally, you would think that a dot edu should also have very, very credible information. But if it's a dot edu and it's a student's portal, which is not moderated, then you have a problem with taking information from a dot edu. When you have a dot gov, of course, everybody will expect that a government site is a very credible site. But we have all heard of hackers hacking into a government site and putting so many things on. And so the conclusion about getting information from every site is that you need to evaluate whatever information that you get from that site. Let's look at more domain sites and what the implications are for information professionals. A dot .gov, org, that means a, a non-profit organization. Again, we expect information here to be very credible, but there is always a caution. A dot .mil is a military site. A dot .net, it acts as a catch-all for sites that don't fit into any of the preceding domain suffixes. So you get a dot .net, yes, also find out exactly what the information is there. Ladies and gentlemen, I expect for your activity that you'll be able to visit a few domain sites with all these extensions to be able to determine whether the information there is credible or it is not credible. I hope you have enjoyed the first part of this session. We'll continue with the internet and give you more information. Thank you very much.